guys, and welcome back to Reading Club. Today, I'm going to read you The 104 Story Treehouse, Chapter 7 and Chapter 8. Chapter 7, Up and Up and Up. We go to the never-ending staircase and start climbing. We climb up and 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 up. Are we nearly there yet? I think we are. Keep going. And up, 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 and up. These never-ending staircases? Stairs never end. Uh-oh. Up and up, and up, and up, and up, and up, and up. How far now? Mm, it's a long way. We could be climbing for the rest of our lives. And up, 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 and onward, ever onward. Oof, but. And up, 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 and up. Hey, Andy, shouldn't we be obeying the laws of gravity? And up, 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 and up. We've been climbing for hours. Do these stairs actually lead anywhere? Good question. And are we nearly there? <sighs> up and up and up and up. And up and up and up and up. We'll never get there. And up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Nearly there. Hi, Jill. Hurry up. Up and up and up and up and up and up. We'll never get up there. We'll never get there. Not for now. Very confusing. And up and up and up and up and up and up. Nearly there. Is she good? Up and up and up and up and up and up. Hey, look at me. This so slow. Not far now. Up and and up and up and up and up and up and up and up. And last one there is a rotten tomato. Your head's a rotten tomato. Up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Are we nearly there? I give up. We'll never make it. I can do this. We've come so far. And up, and up, and up, and up, and up, and up, and... Hey, Andy, I have that feeling of deja vu, vu again. It's all in your imagination. Not far to go. Up, and up, and up, and up, and up, and up, and up. Stupid bird taking my tooth. An extremely rare, high-flying, mountain-dwelling, warm snatcher, you mean. This is fun. And up, and up, and up, and up, and pant sweat. Have you two, have you seen Terry? Up, and up, and up, and up, and up, and up, and up. It really isn't fun now. Are we nearly there yet? Up, and up, and up, and up, and up, and up, and up. Now it's a really long way away. You're holding the binoculars the wrong way around. How is all this rock staying up? Up and 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 up. I don't know. What if the bird refuses to get the tooth back? I don't know. And up and up and up and up and up and not far now. I'm really sick of all these stairs. So are the readers, probably. Up and up and up and up and up 
and up and up and up and up. So steep. And up and up and up and up and up. Catch up. What the? Are we nearly there yet? Up and 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 up. Stop playing with that fish and get out there. Goodbye, Mr. Fish. Happy travels. And up and up and up and up and up. Are we nearly there yet? Focus, Terry. Up and 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 up. Did I hear what? Did you hear, Jill? We're nearly there. No, we really are nearly there. Chapter 8. Beep, beep, beep. Are we there yet? Says Terry for about the 15 million, 50 millionth time. Almost, I say, just a few more steps. Look, says Jill, there's the nest. Can you see my tooth, I say. No, says Jill, just a bunch of the cutest baby birds I've ever seen. We climb up a few more thousand steps, and so we are right across from the nest. There is a big gap between the staircase and the nest, and a long drop back down to the ground. How are we going to get across, says Terry? It's much too far to jump. I know, I say. It didn't look this far when we were looking up at it from the forest. What about your emergency inflatable underpants, Terry? Says Jill. We could wish across in those. I'm not wearing them, he says. They got a puncture when we used them to sail to the desert island in the last book. But I am wearing my emergency inflatable ears. Are you kidding me? I say, emergency inflatable ears? That's the dumbest thing you've come up with than, than just Neil's training academy. Yeah, but my ninja snail saved the day. This Terry, just like my emergency inflatable ears. Well, watch this. He takes a deep breath, concentrates hard, and then his ears inflate about a thousand times their normal size. See, he says, I told you. You look so cute with big ears, says Joel, just like Dumbo the flying elephant. Yeah, he looks dumb, all right, I say. Well, what are they? Well, says Terry, they're flappable and really good for getting from, say, the steps of a never-ending staircase across to, say, a bird's nest. Climb into my ear and I'll take us there right now. Everybody ready? Here we go. Terry launches himself from the staircase and starts flapping his ears as fast as he can. The day Terry turned into an earplane. Flap, 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 peep, 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 peep. Prepare the cabin for landing, says Terry. Please ensure tray tables are closed and seats are upright. Thank you for flying, Terry Deer Airlines. Terry D Airlines. Peep, peep, peep. What tray table? I say, what seats? All I had to sit on was this disgusting lump of earwax. Hey, says Terry, I heard that. Terry lands in the nest with a bump, and Joe and I fall out of his ears. We are immediately surrounded by a bunch of noisy baby birds all pecking at us. Terry's emergency inflatable ears don't stand a chance against the baby birds' sharp beaks. Hey, those baby birds just pop my ears, says Terry. Yes, they're very peaky, says Joe. I hate peaky birds, I say. That, let's look for my tooth and get out of here as fast as we can. I think we may have to put off the tooth hunt for the moment, says Joe. Here comes the mother bird. Eek, I say. Its beak looks even sharper and pointier than the baby bird's beaks and much bigger. Can you talk to it, Joe? says Terry. Not while we're in her nest, says Joe. If she sees us, she's going to peck first and ask questions later. Warm snatchers are very protective of their young. We have to hide. But there's nowhere to hide, I say. In that case, says Jill, we'll just have to pretend to be baby birds and hope she doesn't notice. We crouch down, put our hands on our hips, and we move our elbows back and forth. cock a doodle says Terry. You're supposed to be pretending to be a baby worm snatcher, Terry, says Jill, not a rooster. Oops, says Terry. Now, how about this? Beep, beep, beep. Much better, says Jill. I mean, beep, beep, beep. The mother worm snatcher lands, gripping the side of the nest with her enormous talons. Her beak is full of wriggling, writhing worms. 
The peep peep peeping of the baby worm snatchers is deafening. They all crane their necks to the sky and open their beaks wide. We do the same, except we have mouths, not beaks. The mother worm snatcher opens her beak and fresh wriggling worms come raining down into her open mouths. Eric, my mouth is full of cold, dirty, wiggling worms. Yuck, I'm trying not to chew or swallow them, but it's not easy. That's like they want to wriggle down my throat. But weirdly, Terry doesn't seem to mind them at all. He's slurping them up like he's eating spaghetti. Peep, 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 peep. At last, the mother bird runs out of worms, flaps her enormous wings, and flies away. Yuck, I say, spitting out the worms as fast as I can. Double yuck, says Jill, spitting hers out too. No offense to the worms. I feel rejected. Terry doesn't spit his out though. His mouth is so full, so full in fact, that there's a worm hanging out of it. One of the baby worm snatchers snatches the end of the worm and starts pulling on it. Terry pulls back. The bird pulls harder. Terry pulls harder. Look at this, Joel. I say Terry's having a tug of worm with a baby bird. Oh, come on, Terry, says Joel. Let the baby bird have the worm. But it is my worm, says Terry mumbles through a mouthful of worms. Mother gave it to me. While Terry is talking, the baby bird seizes the chance and s seizes its chance and snatches the worm and swallows it in a one greedy gulp. Hey, says Terry, that's not fair. Yes, it is, says Jill, because you're not really a baby bird, and that mother bird was not really your mother. I know, says Terry, but I am really angry. So am I, I say. But it doesn't change the fact that worm tastes awful. I mean, that baby worm snatcher over there is being sick. Not even worm snatchers like worms. It's not being sick, says Jill. It's choking. It must have tried to eat too many worms at once. Stand back. I'm going to perform the worm melt maneuver. Jill picks up the bird, holds it upside down, and squeezes it gently. The bird cops up a bunch of worms, including one with a really big white head and an extremely thin body. In fact, it doesn't look so much like... A worm as a piece of string. A piece of string that it's attached to. My tooth, I say. That must be what it was choking on, says Jill. Yay, says Terry. Now all our problems are solved. Well, not all of them, I say. We're still stuck in a nest on the top of Mount Everest. Mount Everest with no way of getting down. Oh, yeah, says Terry. But hang on. Worms are really stretchy. When the mother bird comes back with another load of worms... We could tie them all together and make a warm bungee to lower us safely back to the ground. We can't do that, says Jill. That's cruelty to the worms. Maybe, says Terry, but we'd be saving them from being eaten by birds, so we'd sort of be doing them a favor. No, we wouldn't, says Jill. Birds eating worms is nature's way. Try, try, tying worms together to make a warm bungee is not. At that moment, we hear the sounds of flapping wings and a mighty walk. We all turn around. The mother worm snatcher is back, and she's seen us. She dips her head down and stoops toward us. So long, Andy and Jill. So Sarah, it's been nice knowing you. You too, says Jill, and you too, Andy. Before I can reply, the baby bird that Jill saves flutters in between us, us and the mother bird. It peep, peeps, peeps loudly and quickly. What's happening, Jill? Says Terry. What's the baby bird saying? It's telling its mother how we saved it from choking, says Jill. The mother bird turns to us. Walk, 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 she walks. What does that mean, Jill? I said, is it good or bad? It's good, says Jill. Very good. She says she is extremely grateful and that if there's ever any anything she can do to repay us for our quick thinking and kindness, we only have to ask. Do you think she could give us a lift back to town to the treehouse? I said. Oh, ask her, says Jill. She turns to the mother bird. Walk, walk, walk. Walk, 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 walk. The mother bird walks back at her. She says, yes, she'd be happy to, says Jill. 
We climb up onto the mother's bird backs. The feathers are hard and slippy and very difficult to hold on to. We can use the string as a set of rain, says Joe, throwing it around the bird's neck. Everybody ready? Let's fly. The warm snatcher flaps her wings, alights from the nest, and begins a rapid descent. Down and down and down we fly. And down until we reach the ground. We climb up off the bird and Jill thanks her. Walk. They have a long walking conversation. And then the bird walks gratefully at one of uh, at us one last time and takes off again. What were you and the bird walking about, I say? She said that if we ever needed help again, all we have to do is walk. Says Jill, what's up? What a big adventure we've had. I'm going to go straight home and tell my animals all about it. See you later, Ms. Walk. Tell Joe we're all a bit hungry. That's the end of this channel. If you liked it, please click many likes and subscribe. Thanks again for listening, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.